Can you believe that I backed something on Kickstarter that actually came on time? Today we're going to thoroughly test this Wham Bam flexible build plate system, as well as torture testing the old Creality CMAG bed too. Welcome back to Teaching Tech and welcome to my new studio. When I've got this thing together a little bit more, I might do a behind the scenes video because I reckon I've got it set up pretty good. But anyway, onto the subject of today's video and it's this, a Wham Bam flexible build plate system. I backed it on Kickstarter late last year and it actually arrived on time. It's comprised of three components. There's a flexible bed, which sticks onto your printer. There's a flexible spring steel sheet, which sits on top of that. And then the proprietary Wham Bam PEX sticker sheet, which goes on the top. Now you might recall in the past, I fitted a very similar product to my Tebow Tornado in the BuildTac flex plate system. In my opinion, that product still works really well. And there's only one main problem and that's the price because it certainly isn't cheap. It will be interesting to compare how this one goes considering it's much, much cheaper. But in the meantime, the first thing we need to do is torture test this old CMAG flexible bed. Creality have been selling their CMAG bed for quite a while now and it's available from factory on the Ender 3 Pro as well as the Ender 5. Compared to the spring steel sheet offerings, it's completely floppy. So after you remove it, you simply peel it away from your print, which generally works quite well. But there's a problem. It's typically only meant to be for PLA, which needs a 60 degree heated bed. This is because of something called the Curie temperature, which is the temperature point at which a material loses its magnetism. I'm not sure where this came from, but most people consider the upper limit of the CMAG bed at 80 degrees. My job is to try and test that and potentially break it. To do this, I start by heating up the Ender 3 all the way up to 100 degrees, which is a common temperature for printing with ABS. With its 24 volt power system, it gets there pretty quickly and I let it sit for a few minutes. After that, I let it cool down and I test to see if anything's different. At this stage, it appears to have the exact same properties as it did before the test. It peels off and goes back on in an identical manner. I decide to up the ante by actually competing a longer print at 100 degrees, printing this fan shroud out of ABS. The print completes successfully, but when it's done, I come across a problem that I've come across with this type of bed several times before, and that's that it just doesn't want to release between the A and the B upper and lower halves. I reckon this is pretty strange because the A and B sections are only attached by magnetism, so it shouldn't require anywhere near as much force to separate this model from the print bed. In fact, this one broke off before the magnetic sheet separated from the top. As for the magnetism of the bed, well, it seems to be behaving exactly the same once again. So I pop it on and begin another test print. When it finishes, same problem. Listen to this cracking sound. As you can see, the part is still stuck to the upper build surface. If you can explain this, please post in the comments. Importantly, the magnetism of the bed is still unaffected. Now you can't deny the fact that this thing survived everything that I threw at it. Therefore, I'm going to call the 80 degree limit on these sheets myth busted. Anyway, that's not what this video is about. Time to get on with this one and we're going to start with installation. The Wham Bam system comes very nicely packaged with two large bits of cardboard inside a bigger cardboard box, sandwiching all the goodies safely on the inside. The contents of the envelope are as follows. We have the PEX stickered build surface. Think of this like a more engineered version of PEI. We have our removable spring steel sheet as well as a floppy magnetic base that goes underneath. The sheet has no burrs and some nice thumb tabs. One side of this sheet is for mounting instructions and the other side is for use and care of the PEX sheet. It's also worth noting that the kit comes with these stick on shims just in case your factory bed is warped. Time to remove the base layer of the CMAG sheet and I did it with the temperature set to zero. I found it fairly easy to get my fingers underneath and then much to my delight as I pulled it off it left little to no glue residue behind. It did require a fair bit of pulling force though. I used acetone poured carefully into the corner where the glue was left behind followed by some light scrubbing with some paper towel. A final wipe down with IPA and I was ready to proceed. I took the time to get a ruler and confirm that my bed was in fact warped. I have a BL touch so I'm not going to be worrying about the shims for my installation. You want to start by peeling back about an inch of the base magnetic sheet and then very carefully aligning it from the top. At this stage you can stick on that first edge, peel it up and very carefully reach underneath to pull back the backing paper as you use something flat like a ruler from above to work out any potential bubbles. 
You have to be careful here, but even so, it doesn't take very long to get a great result. I recommend at this point slowly moving the bed back and forth to make sure you have clearance and nothing's going to collide. I couldn't help myself and test fitted the spring steel top to see how the magnetism was and it's nice and strong. Not quite as strong as on the Prusa Mark III, but definitely no chance of it moving during a print. Next up, it was time to get some IPA and to remove all of my hand prints so I could put on the PX sticker sheet on the top. The technique for applying this is pretty much exactly the same. You're going to peel off about an inch, flip it around, align it from the top, very carefully brush down that leading edge with your fingers. This time round, as the material is thinner, I found it a little bit more agile to use a plastic card to work out all the bubbles and make sure I had everything stuck down nice and flat. I didn't get mine perfect, but it was pretty close and I was satisfied. Finally, we can remove the protective film from above the PX sheet. The instructions recommend using steel wool and IPA to scuff up and clean the surface before you first print, but I didn't have any steel wool on hand, so instead I just used the IPA and paper towel and then fitted it to the machine ready for my first test print. If you're not running auto bed leveling, don't forget to re-level your bed using the thumb screws. That really was a straightforward install. Time to get testing and I figured I wanted to test how it stuck and then released for PLA, ABS and PETG. The first thing I picked was this Max Megapod leg because it's got a big overhang and very little surface to anchor from. It seemed to sink fairly well and I upped the bed 10 degrees more to 70 degrees as per the instructions. Fortunately it made it to the end of the print without coming unstuck. It came off a little too easy for my liking however when it came time to remove. I therefore went to the shops, got some steel wool and scrubbed it down with IPA as instructed. My next test print would be with ABS and it was another tricky one. A print that needed a lot of support in a 5015 fan shroud for the Hero Me. With the bed set to 110 degrees, the first layer bonded well enough that as soon as the print was finished, I couldn't remove it unless I took off the top sheet and used the flex feature to remove it. After this, it came straight off. I did have earlier problems, however, that left marks on the PEX sheet. In fact, it took me three or four goes to get that print to happen successfully using ABS. A crack in the upper mount for my Hero Me base caused the whole thing to sag forward, stuffing up my Z offset for the BL touch and driving the nozzle into the heated bed. In addition to this, the fan shroud was hanging lower, cooled poorly and constantly knocked off the part being printed. I was very relieved to finally work out what this problem was and eliminate it. Next up, I printed the same part from PETG with the bed heated to 90 degrees and it worked perfectly. One bonus is that it's really easy to pull off the skirt. Finally, I wanted to do another PLA print to test the surface now that I'd scuffed it up with steel wool. And I picked this one because it was delicate, it had corners that could potentially peel off. Fortunately, they didn't budge at all. This is the type of model that you would likely destroy by hacking at it with a scraper. And fortunately, in this instance, I could flex and it removed beautifully. This is a pretty nice little key ring and it's linked in the description. In case you were wondering, the surface of the bottom of your prints will be glossy with this PEX. In summary, you'd have to say that it definitely works as advertised. There were issues, but none of them were the fault of the product, and it seemed to overcome them anyway, coming through with flying colours. Probably what we should do now is compare it to its main rival, the BuildTac FlexPlate. Firstly, price, and the Wham Bam is significantly cheaper no matter what size you choose. In this video, we fitted the 235mm squared, which is suitable for the Ender 3, and that's around $30 cheaper than the BuildTac. Probably the biggest difference is with something with a 300mm bed like a CR10, which comes in for the Wham Bam at US $50 cheaper. The BuildTac system is really good, but there's a lot of advantages here. It's cheaper, the edges are a bit cleaner, so there's no deburring required. It's rated at 10 degrees higher, and that means up to 130. It's thinner, therefore it heats up faster. It has the finger tap at the front and it's in stock, unlike the BuildTac, which when you go to their website always seems to list about three weeks until you can get one shipped. The elephant in the room, of course, is the CMAG sheet, which now that we know can handle ABS is an absolute bargain at only 16 US dollars. The links for this, as well as the Creality glass bed, are in the description. Overall, however, I'm happy to say that the Wham Bam is a much more polished and capable product. Whatever bed system you use, I'd say the days of using one of these to hack off your print are long gone. There's a lot of great options out there, so please explore them and improve your printing experience. Thank you so much for watching this video. I like this product enough that I'm going to fit it to several more of my printers. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing.
G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.